My name is Eli. It's a, I'm a medical Qigong practitioner and energy healing coach. And this is a talk that is available for everyone to tap in. And it's going to be also transcribed into the podcast called Awaken the Healer Within. How can we heal ourselves? <laughs> Why is it very important? Why there's some things that we, there's, there's no answer from Western medicine to everything. Yeah, and uh, a lot of time prescription drugs have a lot of side effects. How can we take our healing into our own hand? Is it possible? And uh, we are going on a topic, a topic of uh, how to get, how to live with more energy, more good quality of energy, high energy and good quality of energy. So this is uh, five talks and this is the last talk in the five talks, but we're going to continue this. But uh, I just wanted to kind of uh, tie it in a, in, in a bundle of five talks. And I don't know if you remember all of them. This is the last one. And we're going to talk about probably one of the most important thing about how uh, to cultivate more energy and a very elusive subject that I have a lot of experience with. I'm feeling very confident today talking about it because I helped so many people. I taught this subject many times over the years, and I was very successful working with people one on one in eliminating this issue that they're dealing with for many years. Uh, so I'm very humbled uh, that they uh, trust me and uh, I was able to help them. And the, the, this topic is sleep and it's very elusive. And sometimes we we the, the thing with sleep is that you cannot really force yourself to sleep well <laughs> you cannot say hey okay let's do it it's just something that happens and sometimes it doesn't happen how can we control it how can we can we uh how can we elicit a, a really good deep night sleep and why is it so important you know uh so i send the in the chi talk um mailer uh, a lot of data about sleep today we're associating sleep with uh with not only having better energy more focus more creative thoughts and being uh, calm but we actually uh there's a strong relationship between sleep and uh, and your immune system your immune system drops 70 percent seven zero seventy percent when you sleep less than six hours a, uh, a night. Uh, the Health World Organization actually links cancer with people that work night shifts. So it's known now that when your immune system is so much low, uh, if you working night shifts and your, if your sleep is not regular and you don't sleep well, there's more chances to, to, uh, for ailments and for cancer specifically. So it's, it's uh, related to dementia now. We know now that uh, uh, dementia is tightly related to uh, lack of sleep or lack of deep sleep. It's better to, to talk about deep sleep because a lot of people take drugs, right? Insomnia drugs or uh, alcohol, and they sleep well. They think, oh, I slept well, but they wake up not refreshed right and so we're not going into this deep uh deep layers of sleep where where healing and rejuvenation happens with prescription drugs so that's the problem uh, sleep is is a is a big issue it's a big issue and and you know what happened <laughs> another interesting fact about sleep is that um whenever we have the daylight saving, right? So whenever we sleep one more hour, when the clock change and we sleep one more hour, there's a, a reduction of car accidents, of calls the police by 25% and of, of heart attacks. Whenever we uh, change the clock again and we lose one hour of sleep, there's 25% up in heart attacks and 24% uh, rate go up of uh, car accidents, assaults, uh, violence, things like that. That's very interesting. So we have a huge experiment over billions of people twice a year that we can actually see the effects of sleep. 
uh, it actually related to aging because we they show that actually the telomeres, the, the DNA is getting damaged with less hours of sleep. And it's very interesting the fact that people get more heart attacks whenever they sleep less. <laughs> In Chinese medicine, the ruler of sleep is the heart. And this is why I chose this topic for the summer because the heart is the organ that associated with the summer and, uh, and, and uh, lack of sleep or problems falling asleep and problem, problems with general problems of sleep are connected to the heart, are connected to the heart. The heart can benefit or suffer from it. Yeah, there's also uh, um, um, a lot of other, you know, you, 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 you cannot uh, uh, lose weight so fast if you don't sleep well, your hormonal ba balance is off. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of stuff uh, that is happening. So how do we get deep sleep? And there's many, many sleep labs. It's a big, it's a big industry. It's a multi-billion dollar industry. Uh, and uh, in Chinese medicine, we look at it from a different perspective, completely different perspective. And I was able to work with people and really help them. You know, I remember one of my clients, he used to be on uh, insomnia medication for seven years and slept very little. The, uh, and uh, after uh, less than one month, three weeks of working together, he got off insomnia medication and he slept six hours or more a day, which was remarkable. And uh, he was very adamant about fixing this issue. And uh, we gone into the route of, um, of energy practices in Chinese medicine. So I wanted to put it out there because there's a lot of resources that are not pills, are not alcohol, are not, you know, other substances that you can take. There are ways to fall asleep naturally and wake and get that deep sleep. There's there's ways if you really want to if you really want to. So before I talk about how Chinese medicine sees it from its perspective, I just wanted to kind of invite everybody uh, to um, if you are serious about doing uh, kind of like learning about it and getting some resources and tools of how to incorporate deep sleep, how to uh, fix your sleep. The, in my product line, uh, chiwithelli.com, there's uh, a whole workshop, a three-hour workshop about sleep, and it's divided very nicely into recorded practices, recorded meditations, uh, lectures, so you understand how to live a lifestyle that is more uh, helping you sleep better. And, uh, and we have a weekly class. It's called uh, Good Night Qigong. And uh, this class is because, because I, I felt very confident in the subject. And so I did a, a daily, a weekly class uh, that's called Good Night Qigong on Wednesday night, 8 p.m. Pacific time that is recorded and you can tap onto it anytime. All right, so that's, that's from that perspective. And let's understand a little bit behind the scene from, from a Chinese medicine perspective. So a problem that us, uh, with the sleep is a problem of what we is a type of energy that is called yin. We have two energies. We have yang energy and we have yin energy. And the yin energy is deficient. So any problems with sleep, any problems with sleep, any, is connected to a problem with your yin chi, your yin energy. What is yin energy? <laughs> you know, in the West, we when we talk about energy, we talk about active activity. You know, I'm awake. I have a lot of energy. Uh, when you say energy in to the Western mind, you talk about go, go, go. I have enough energy to do things. Well, this energy to do things and to go out and to be very active comes from underneath it there's what we call the yin chi if you have enough of that energy then you can actually go and have a lot of energy if you don't it'll be very hard so we can think about it as um let's see how can we think about it in in a metaphoric way yeah like 
if you don't have gas in your tank, you cannot, you cannot, uh, pi the pilot light, the flame wouldn't be big enough, right? If there's no gas. So the gas, the, the gas is the yin energy and the flame, the flame is the yang. So if you want to go, 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 do things, be very active and you don't have enough gas in your tank, what would happen is that you're going to, you can do all these things. And that's what happens. We are, that's kind of like the whole population pretty much is wired because wired and tired. We are going too much. We are turning up the flame, but we don't have enough gas in the tank. So we're running a reservoir so like the, the reservoirs of the kidney energy are running. <laughs> so we are, we are, um, uh, another, another, I, another metaphor that would be uh, that we talked about before is like a pot with water and you're cooking the water <laughs> and you're cooking the water in a high flame. But if you raise the temperature, if you go, go, go and do things, the water will ev ev eventually evaporate. So you have to fill up the water. You have to fill up the tank of gas. And how do you fill up the tank of gas? Through rest, through sleep through meditation, through mindful practice, through Qigong, through reading books, through, uh, you know, through every activity that is more yin induced, is more relaxed. And that would feel, and there's a specific type of breathing too, to induce more yin energy. And that yin, and that if you're deficient in it, then it's very hard to sleep. So you have to have a little bit of it in order to sleep well and if you are depleted you won't sleep very well and uh and what happens is that a lot of people come to bed when they're burnt out they're like they're tired when you are exhausted and tired from the day and then you go to bed that's a big mistake <laughs> a big mistake because when you're really, really tired and exhausted, you don't have any more energy. You don't have any more energy and you definitely have no yin energy. And then you go to sleep, but you don't sleep deep. You wake up also tired. When you, when you go to sleep exhausted, you wake up tired. And you have to have enough energy before you go to bed. You have to have, and this is what we do, the good night Qigong practice. How do we get more energy before sleep? How do we get enough energy so we can induce yin chi? So our, yeah, at night what happens is that the body heals. The body heals, right? If you're sick, what do you do? You go rest. They tell, oh, go sleep. And then you sleep, you feel better. And the, so the yin chi is really the underlayment, the underlayment of your life. Yeah, we are... We are young, yeah, the body is physical body, yeah, and, and the spirit. Underneath it, there's the invisible, the invisible energy. <clears throat> so there's the visible, there's the trees, the things that you can see with your naked eye, and these are like the physical, and there's the non-physical, the emotions, and the mental state, and where you are, and, and you could be and a lot of time, it could be a little tricky because sometimes people say, well, you know what, I'm really relaxing all day <laughs> and I'm still not sleeping well, you know, but what do you do when you're sitting and you're not, when you're not, um, yeah, are you, are you, because whenever you have emotion of worry, anxiety, depression, all these emotions are seeing as yang, not yin. So basically, you can sit, be quiet, but you are emotionally really, really uh, negative, and that would be actually not, it's actually uh, the opposite of nourishing your yin chi. Yeah, it's very inflammatory. So anything that is flame, like we talked about the fire, is yang. Anything that is calm is yin. If you are walking in nature and feeling one with nature, you're feeling appreciation, the heart opens up, all of a sudden, there's this yin energy. Yeah, I have one client told me, you know, I'm not sitting, I'm not, I'm not, um, 
I'm not sleeping well for a long time, but yesterday I did sleep good. I don't know what, but I slept good. I thought, and what happened that day before? He told me, you know what? I went to a beautiful little town here in Northern California and I had, I had this beautiful dinner in a patio with a friend of mine. The flowers were so beautiful and the food was so good and we were laughing and we were having fun and we were enjoying ourselves. And it was so good. And then I drove home and I went to bed and I slept like a baby. <laughs> so when the heart opens, when the, you're calm, when you're enjoying yourself, when you when you absorb. It. So when the heart opens up, you're going to sleep well. When you're focusing on gratitude, when you're appreciating life, you know, so the heart heals, the sleep heals. So the heart, how the heart uh, heals through being present in the present moment, like present, like I'm seeing the colors of this rose, I'm eating the food, I'm tasting it so good. I'm having a conversation with somebody so good. So this is a, there's many, many things to talk about at sleep. And there's, there's a, a lot, but it all comes down to how do we nourish our heart? How do we cultivate more yin energy and how we separate between yin and yang? Because children sleep very well, but you see them during the day, they run all day, all day, they run, 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 run. And then they sleep, boom, they fall, they sleep like a rock. You wait, you can call their name, they're not going to wake up. Don't you want to be like that too? <laughs> sleep so deep. <laughs> Nothing can wake you up. So there's a separation of yin and yang. So you're very active in your body. Yeah, you're doing things. And then at night you sleep. There's a separation of yin and just when the yin and yang get more separated, separated, it gets stronger yin, stronger yang. Yeah. And if you sit and you're not here, not there all day, you're thinking, you worry, you, you know, it's just it's, it's muddy. And then so there's a lot to talk about it. I can talk about it for so long but really what i wanted to uh convey and to kind of leave you with um anybody that listens to it and to some few tips of 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 of, of having a good night's sleep first one is uh having a, rout a routine meaning you sleep at the same time every day that's very very important making your sleep every day a habit and then the second one would be a second one, if I would choose one thing, it would be um, having a, a cold shower or, or, or a, ta a lukewarm shower, not, not hot, uh, just a, a little cooler than what you a shower before bed that is a little cooler is going to cool the body off. That would be very, very good for sleep. And uh, the third thing is not to, is before bed, you know, three hours before, is not to eat a big meal. Especially last meal should, should not have meat in it. It takes a long time to digest. And when your body digesting <laughs> at sleep, it's not healing itself. One of the recommended, uh, the Buddha, yeah, the big Buddha, he said one thing was like, if you want to heal yourself, if you want health and healing, that was one of his recommendation for health and healing. He said, skip the last meal. And you sleep like a baby. And you know, and you'll see, it's very important. So not eating or eating a very light meal before bed. And we are here in the West doing the opposite, right? The big dinner. <laughs> the dinner is like the main. Di and in Chinese medicine, we say, oh no, the breakfast is the big meal. And then the, the night you 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 don't want to you don't want to put so much in your stomach before sleep. It's not good. So uh, that would be my three things: cold shower or lukewarm shower, and uh, not eating, you know, two or three hours before. And the last meal would be no meat. And then uh, and then uh, yeah, the regularity. That's very very important. Now, if you really want to learn more about, about this from 
uh, from an energy perspective and how to lower how the what is the yin type of breath what you you know come to the class come to the good night qigong class it's uh it's tomorrow um you know at 8 p.m pacific time or uh if you're serious about learning a little deeper you know you can um you can look at the workshop qigong for healthy sleep it's a three-hour workshop is going even more in depth and if you want to work one-on-one just a shout out i'm here i had success over and over again with people that really were on medication and insomnia for many many years and they were able to heal in less than a month so that's pretty remarkable uh and and the practices working with me one-on-one would be much more uh vigorous much more stronger than just a, a class once a week. It's, it's a daily practice you have to really commit so if you really want to commit to fixing a problem uh, i can help you uh, so i'm so this is this is the this is the very is a very important topic sleep is uh, is really the source of of uh, of your energy and longevity comes from it and it really means uh it really, you know, and, and there's many, many tips of what to do, and but really connecting with the heart knows that your emotional turbulence and how you live your lifestyle and during the day could really impact your sleep because you're processing at night what you experience during the day. So how can we, how can we, how can we work with this? So that's a very, it's a very, very interesting topic. Uh, are there any questions? I'm going to open it up because I'm just realized that I'm talking a lot. <laughs> but I, I can open it up uh, just for questions or sharing or whatever you you guys want to ask about this uh, this topic about sleep. Uh, you know, and uh, just you know, remember that there's really a solution and you can really fix it without, you know, you don't have to buy that pillow online or that that mattress or all this, uh, take melatonin or take this and take, you can do it by yourself. You can actually improve your lifestyle through it. It, it, it really, it's, we're seeing things as holistically and all of a sudden, you, you, your life improves completely, not only the sleep. So that's actually a much more beneficial than taking a pill. So uh, what do we think? Anybody wants to add something or to ask or? Ellie? Yeah. So that's why I came to listen to this, because sleep is so important. And if you look at your sleep patterns during your lifetime, you know, hormonally, how sometimes you can't sleep. I know women have periods in their their lives where they can't sleep. And a lot of your techniques help relax the mind to get to sleep at night. And that's why I like your Wednesday night classes, because it's taught me a method. I don't necessarily do it every night, but when I can, it's calming the mind, breathing, stretching, and relaxing. And I do sleep much better when I do that. Oh, that's awesome. (laughs) Yes. Marty, thank you for uh, thank you for sharing this. Yes. And, you know, and yeah, you are coming pretty regularly and and it's it's nice to see it to see it. And uh, and thank you for. Yeah. Thank you for 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 saying that. And uh, it is possible. And, you know, yeah, with women with hormonal uh, balance and issues, we have what we call like uh, flares up like um, uh, and and what what does that mean these these heat waves yeah uh hot flashes right these are this is this is yin deficiency this is yin deficiency so if you're a woman and you experience hot flashes this is yin deficiency it's exactly the reason why we don't sleep and uh we can fix it and it's it's possible and so again in chinese medicine it's a complete different uh, shift of in 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 perspective, how we look at, at sleep than Western uh, science, but uh, it yields a lot of good results, like Marty said. So <laughs> I just encourage everybody to to come and to um, 
and to enjoy it. And I just remembered, we just noticed that we didn't do any beginning ceremony to start this talk. <laughs> well, we're going to do one before we close. Anything else that, uh, that anybody wants to add on? I know that Edward, you are in the, in the sleep class for a little bit. Yes. And thanks you are a good you. sleeper regardless, right? Eight, nine and 10 hours. This is because of you. And oh, oh, great. And I carried what you said in the winter to, to sleep between three and five in the afternoon in, in the winter. So I carried it into the summer. And if I get home somewhere between three and five, what I've done is I lie on the floor and I sink my back and body a thousand feet down, 2000 feet down. And that really calms yeah. you. And it really puts you in, but, you know, with the good night Qigong, I can't even make it through a class, you know, and I do it every night. I get up at 11 o'clock and I do your exercises. I can't make it through and I just fall on the bed. <laughs> it's, 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 it's amazing you know and it really works it really that's does that's great that's great yeah thank you thank you for uh and you know and some some people it's very interesting because some people say uh they uh they've tried to they come to class and they feel very tired they feel very very sleepy and they don't like it they thought oh i'm going to be more energized <laughs> It's really interesting to see how the mind works, how the human mind <laughs> works. And I'm like, you are tired. I just like, we just released all that energy so you can acknowledge, your body acknowledges, hey, you know, I'm, I'm holding all this. I'm wired and tired and I'm not even noticing it. So really going to the parasympathetic nervous system and, and understanding through the practice, you go, oh, wow, I'm yawning. I'm actually needs to sleep. That's a good thing. So, um, so if you are doing Qigong and you're feeling tired as a consequence or sleepy, that the body tells you that it actually craves that yin energy. It's, it's lacking it and you really want to yield to it and, and do it and go rest. Now you can rest without the agitation from the mind. So I just wanted to talk also about this group of people. <laughs> uh let's close this thank you so much for joining and talking about sleep we we might kind of lengthen this talk uh with another talk about sleep because there's so much to talk about uh but really uh it ties up all our conversations before because we started this energy talk if you remember about yin and yang and how to live a, a balanced life between yin and yang and that's very that's the root of good sleep and and all the talks really were leading to 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 this one so um uh let's let's close this uh let's close let's do a closing ceremony to our talk and let's close our eyes and take a few deep breaths in from the nose out from the mouth and then you exhale from the mouth Really melt your body, relax the shoulders, and give way to gravity. So each inhalation, we can feel the whole form and shape of the body. It's almost like you getting the air in and it goes everywhere in your body. Exhale from the mouth and at the top of the inhalation, when you take it in from the nose, suspend the air a little bit. So kind of sipping the air more and more. Pause a little bit at the top and exhale and relax from the mouth. And drop the shoulders. Yeah, so inhale, silky breath in long 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 suspended at the top and relax feel the whole body as you do that silky breath
And as you think about the form and shape of your body, you can go into normal breathing. And let's ground our body. So just kind of continue to go down into the floor and the earth beneath you and anchor the body into the, the earth deeply inside, like about 20 feet deep into the earth. So you're thinking, yeah, you can think about the legs, you can think about different places, and I'm telling you, put your attention 20 feet beneath you. And when you're putting your attention 20 feet beneath you on the spot inside of the earth, now drain all the energy from the body, all the nervous energy. Drain it to that spot. From the brain, from the heart, all the energies that you took on from other people, all the opinions, all the judgments, all the emotions, emptying your vessel 20 at least 20 feet if not more you can go deeper and see how energetically you feel now after you did this for just you know what 30 seconds Let's bring the hands to the heart and smile to your heart. This is very good for your heart, this type of meditation we just did. Smile to your friend and appreciate the heart. Yeah, appreciate it. The heart processes life experiences. So let's just give it gratitude and appreciation for all the work it does since the day we were born. All the experiences. That we experienced. Yeah. And with uh, this sense of appreciate deep appreciation and gratitude. Smile to your heart. Let's open the hands and open the eyes. Beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. So that was kind of a like a little example of cultivating more yin energy, relaxed energy, connecting with the heart, connecting with the ground. Thank you so much, guys, for joining me. <laughs> and uh, I'll see you tomorrow night if you come to the Good Night Qigong. Uh, and we have another class on thursday at noon pacific time healing qigong thank you guys so much thank you marty peter for being here edward dan good to see you and susan have a great day and take this energy with you take this calm energy with you do it before you go to bed tonight just a minute <laughs> bye and a, cold, and a cold shower yeah and a cold shower yes <laughs> thank you dan bye guys okay.